Hi, it's Jenny from Buggy Baby, and today we're taking a look at two of Huck's double push chairs. So we've got here the Swift Duo and the Uptown Duo. What we're going to do is have a look at see what's inside the box. We're going to build the push chairs, and then we're going to have a look at both of them and compare the two of them, see what the differences are. The Swift Duo retails at two hundred and twenty-nine pounds ninety-five pence. And you can use this from birth all the way up until your child reaches 15k, which is somewhere around three years old. You might get a little bit more of use out of it if your child's on the smaller side. Huck advertised this one as being a narrow double, so it is meant to fit through any door. So we'll have a look at that when we get it out of the box. It's also fairly lightweight. It weighs in only 12.3 kilos, which is pretty light for a double. So again, it'll be interesting to see how that feels when we're pushing it around. So what I'm going to do is get the box open, then we're going to get everything out. We'll build the push chair, and then we can have a look at all of the features that it has. So we're having a look at this in the black colour and I'll open up the box so you can see how it comes. So Huck push chairs are always well packaged in really nice sturdy boxes and here you can see it all comes wrapped up in plastic and what I'm going to do now is get everything out for you and lay it all out so we can see what we've got in here. So in the box we have the the push chair itself and then we've also got these front wheels and we have our rear wheels and these are the included bumper bars you also get with it a rain cover which is really useful it's one of the great things that Huck do is they always include a rain cover with their push chairs which is great and here you have the pins that we're going to use to secure the rear wheels so first things first we need to get the rear wheels on so before we do that, we can see here that all of our wheels are plastic wheels. So they're going to be hard wearing, there's going to be no maintenance involved. But what it does mean is that this won't be great on um, for off-road use. So it'll be absolutely perfect for city and town use, smooth pavements, little tiny bumps in the pavements will be fine. But if you're hoping to get a push chair for off-road use then really plastic tires aren't going to be for you and you might want to look at something that's got a, a rubber or a foam tire or even better an air one but like I said they are really hard wearing once you've got them on there's no maintenance involved so you can just forget about them which is great so to get these wheels on what we're going to need to do is use the included washers and pins to secure it so you need to put it on this way around so you can see here how we're doing it and next up, you'll need to grab your washer and your pin. The washer's going to go on first. Now, hopefully, if I can get you in the right position, you'll be able to see here that there's a little hole on this silver pole. And this is where our pin's going to go in. And this is what's securing the back wheel. Now, this is um, a common theme with Huck push chairs. So this is normally how you would put the wheels on on um, the Huck push chairs. And it's a little bit fiddly, but if you know what you're doing, it's not so bad. It might take a couple of attempts just because it's such a small pin. But what you just want to do is get it through that hole and secure it. So if you can see here, you've got the straight part of the pin that's going to go through the hole. And then you need to push it in. And then there you can see the wheel has locked into place. And here are the little caps that we're going to put on. And that's just going to um, cover this part up and keep it safe. And it does need a little bit of force to get in because um, it's a very snug fit. So I've used here just a little flathead screwdriver to help push it in, manoeuvre it into those holes. But there we go. That's in place. OK, so we're going to do the other rear wheel turn this around okay so here you can see the hole on the end of this silver bar that we're attaching it to so on goes the wheel and then we need to pop the washer on and then for the very fiddly part we need to get the straight part of this pin in through these holes okay so that's in now now that really is the hardest part about putting a huck push chair together are these little pins. Firstly, is working out what you do with them. 
because oh. sometimes if you don't bother reading the instructions, you wouldn't realise. Um, but it's, it is really fiddly. So you might get lucky and do it straight away. You might take a few attempts before you get it, but it will eventually go in. Next up, the cap, which is also a little bit tricky on this push chair. So normally with other Huck models, it's not quite as tricky as this to get them in. But this is a little bit of a funny shape and it's very snug fitting. So if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm using a screwdriver to help me push it into place. There we go. If you can see these little bars here that are, that are clicking in and securing, I'm just pushing it in. There we go, and that's in place. So that is the rear wheels done. Now the front wheels, you'll be pleased to know, are a lot easier because they're just gonna slot into place. So you slot them on. And this one down here. And they'll click into place so you know that you've got them on properly. And now we can bring the push chair up with all its wheels on. And if we have a look here, these are locked, let's have a look, there we go. So you can lock these front wheels, you can see they're in locked position now, which is why they're not swivelling. And just on the back here, you've got a little bit that you can twist, and that unlocks them, and then there you are, that's your front swivel wheels. So on first sight, you can see that this is a very slim line double. We can see here the seats are very slim, definitely more suitable for a smaller child and you can see why this only goes up to 15k on each seat because it is quite a short seat and also very slim so that's obviously why we can't have a larger child in here. Right, but I can see straight away, first of all it looks lovely, it looks really good quality. The seats are really nice. For a slightly cheaper double, I would say these look excellent quality. Really nicely padded. Now the material, although not particularly soft to touch, is not rough in any way at all. And I wouldn't imagine that you desperately need to put a liner in there, but perhaps if you're using this for a newborn, it might be nice to put a nice soft liner in here. Okay, looking at the straps here, I can see there's two different positions available so that you can height adjust them according to the size of your child. And what I can also see on here is these two little straps are for you to thread the straps through when you've got a newborn in there. So it's just going to bring the straps down even lower still. So if we have a look at that, let's undo this. So it's a five point harness. And. What that means is that we can detach this. Let's work out how to do that. There we go. Let's take this off. Right, so what you can do is if you wanted to, you can bring it down to this lower setting, but and that what you'd do with that is just unthread the strap and then thread it back through through the back of the seat, and then you can pop this through this little extra strap. What we probably want to do actually before we do that is take the padding off. Okay. There we go. Right, so you to thread that through. You can put your padding back on because obviously this is going to make it more comfortable for your child. Push that free. There we are. And you can see there that what you've done is just pull the straps far enough down that it's going to sit really comfortably on your newborn. So that's a nice clever little idea there just to make sure they're really nice and secure. Right, so let's move that back into the higher position. There we go. So it's not too fiddly, pretty quick and easy to do. Not gonna cause you any aggro. I say is I can't get this back in. Here we go. 
There we go. Okay, so there's nice padding on the straps here, really thick padding, and our clasp, as I said, it's a five point harness, so you need to kind of get all of the bits together, slot it in. Let's work out how we did that. There we go. And of course, if you want to, you can leave these two parts clipped together at all times to make it easier for you. And it just slots into place in the clasp. It's got a nice click, so you'll know that your child's nice and secure. And we have this padding here over the bottom of the straps also just to make sure your child is nice and comfortable. It's got an adjustable footrest, so it clicks up. This is perfect for when you have a newborn. It's just gonna give them lovely support for their legs, keep them in the right position. And then as your child grows, there are two clasps on the bottom of here, which you pull in and then you can bring down and then that's suitable for an older child so that they can dangle their legs over. Okay, so this is on the lie flat position and it does look nice and snug because obviously you've got all of this fabric here which is providing a nice cocoon effect for your child. It's one of the things I always like to see on any push chairs that we're using for a newborn that is nice and snug for them and gives them a little bit of privacy as well if they're having a nap in there. So that looks really good. Now let's turn it around and have a look and see the recline positions. Right, so, okay. Right, so they're a strap recline and what that's going to mean for you is that you can have the seat in any recline position of your choice so to bring it up we can see we're already on the lie flat and what we're going to do with this um, strap we've got this clasp here this mechanism and we're going to bring it up so we're holding on to these two bits here and bringing this mechanism up and then that will bring the seat up as high as it can go. You can see there, we can go no higher. So let's do it on this one as well. So we're just gonna hold on to these little clips and push it up. And there you go, that's the highest we can go. And let's spin that round so we can see the position on the highest position. Okay, so you're going to have to adjust all the fabric slightly so it goes underneath the seat. There we are, let's do it with this one. Right, so this is the upright position. It's still on a slight recline. Um, however, that isn't unusual for push chairs to still be on a slight recline, even on its most upfront position. And what you can see from this, again, is how slim the seats are. So obviously one of the seller points of this is that it's going to go through, or they say it's going to go through um, any doorway. So looking at it, you can definitely see that it would be quite easy to get through anything really, aisles, in the shops, etc. Um, but the trade-off for that is that you've got smaller seats, slimmer seats. So it might depend a little bit on the size of your child as to how comfortable they'll be in this because I can see here that the seats are quite shallow. So although they're really comfortable looking and lovely and padded, there's not not an awful lot of room on the actual seat part here. So I'm going to turn it around again and let's have a look and see what it looks like if we recline it midway. So really easily done. We're going to use this little mechanism, this clasp here. All you're going to do is squeeze it in, let it down and as I said you can choose any position you want which is one of the really lovely things about having these straps to recline them. So we'll put that on about midway. Let's turn it round. And push that fabric in again. There we go. Okay, so you can see it's a nice, comfortable recline position. 
and then obviously if they're napping you can bring it all the way down so you can have one child up one child lying down for a nap whatever you want whatever position you want all the footrests work separately so both of the children are going to be able to find a really comfortable position next up let's have a look at these hoods so they are separate hoods which again is really handy especially if you've got one child that wants to take a nap and another that doesn't because you can keep one up for the non-napping child and one down for the napping child now they're not the biggest hoods and they're also you know sturdy enough but they're not particularly thick hoods but they will do the job that you need them to do and one of the things about these hoods is that they're interchangeable so you can actually choose different colors and you can customize your pushchair as you wish so that's a nice little touch okay, let's spin it round and look at the all-important basket see how much room we've got in here right so it's a decent size what i would say is you might want to be a little bit careful about what you put in here because it's quite shallow this part at the rear it's not on the sides nice and high on the sides nice and high on the front but you might just want to be a little bit careful about what you're putting in um so that it doesn't slip out so i would suggest that you put any valuables into like your purse your phone etc into a bag before you put it in this basket because you don't want to lose anything but it certainly is big enough for the essentials a small nappy bag you might be able to squeeze your coat in there um just important to know that there normally is a weight limit on Hux baskets and I believe that's somewhere around 3k for the double ones so that's just something to bear in mind that you don't want to overload it because if you do that you will be overloading the whole pushchair now whilst we're down here here is the brake so let's have a look at how we work this right so you push it down we're locked and then push it up and we're unlocked really easy to use in a really convenient place right in the middle so there are going to be no problems there right we're going to have a look now at how we fold the push chair down so i can see here that the folding mechanism is on the handle and we've got a little slider and then we've got a button here so what we'll have to do is move the slider across and then we can push that button in and that should collapse the push chair so let's give it a go i'm going to see if i can do it one-handed i always like to see when we put down the push chairs whether it can be done one-handed because it's useful to have so i'm going to slide across as far as it will go push in there we go and the push chair collapses down okay so it's a pretty good size for a double into its folded size and i can see from here if we have a look that that's probably going to fit into most car boots and it's not going to take up too much space if you're storing it at home so that's really nice right let's have a look at how we get it back up so i'm going to assume that we use the same mechanism so slide and push ah what we'll need to do because i believe it clips into place so here look when we folded it down there's a clip here which keeps the frame all together so before we can unfold it we need to undo that and now let's have a look there we go and then i think you're going to have to do that's it a little bit of a wiggle to get it back up into place but to me for a double that seems pretty easy it helps that this is quite light for a double as well only just over 12k so it's not too much effort and it's not gonna you know be too painful on your back or anything like that so let's give it one more go slide it push it in and that's collapsed down and then it automatically locks and then we're gonna unlock that slide give it a little shake there we go and it's back up so included with the push chair are individual bumper bars and they just slide on i believe so let's have a look at that 
yeah so you would just easily slide them on and if you wanted to you could wrap a little toy around there and um, it just gives a little bit more protection for your child when they're sitting up in the seat and to take it off you just press in these little black buttons and it will slide off that's really easy and of course if you wanted to you could just store them in the basket of the push chair along with the included rain cover i'm gonna have a little feel of how it is to push around now now i have used double buggies in my time so i know that they can feel particularly heavy and quite hard to maneuver so let's see how this one feels okay first thing i'm noticing is the lightness of it um also it doesn't feel massive at all which obviously is because it's quite slim and it maneuvers let's see if we can do it in one hand yeah nice and easy really nice to push actually I'm impressed with that and the handles are covered with foam that's going to make it nice and comfortable for you to push the only thing when you have these foam covers is that you need to be a little bit careful to keep them in good condition because they can rip so you just want to make sure you're looking after them so my thoughts on this Swift Duo, it is a really good lightweight push chair. You've seen how easy it is for us to fold it up, how easily it maneuvers and how easy it is to adjust the seats as well and that you can do them individually. And I really like all of that about it. One of the other advantages to this, especially for a duo at this price point, is that the seats are really padded and it's quite unusual to have such padded seats when it's a slightly lower price point. So that's a really good point about this push chair that you could put a newborn in there and they're going to be really comfortable. I mean, there's, there's so much padding in it. The only thing I would say about it is, um, as I've already mentioned, they're very slim seats. So that might not be a problem for your children. It might be a problem for um, some other parents with their children. It really is going to depend on the size of your child and also um, the amount of use that you think you're going to get out of this. So if you're using it for, say, a newborn and a small toddler, maybe a two year old, it's going to be perfect. If you're on the edge and you've got a three-year-old, you might not get that much use out of this before that three-year-old grows out of the seat. So that's really just something to think about um, and your personal circumstances, what the age gap is between your children, the size of them, etc. cetera. Um, but if they are slightly smaller, um, lower age group, you know, as I said, something like two years old, the older one, this is gonna be perfect. Perhaps you only need this for a short term and you've got a child that's coming up to three years old, so you're not gonna use it for that long. Um, that would probably be fine as well. But of course, the benefit of having such slim seats is that this makes it a really slim double and it's going to be particularly great maneuvering this round town. You're going to be able to get it in and out of shops. You're going to get it round the aisles and it's not going to pose you any problems. So as I said at the start, you can use it from birth up to 15K. Each seat takes up to 15K. You want to be careful about how much you're putting in that basket. So normally Huck say somewhere around 3K for their baskets. So you just need to bear that in mind. With this one here, you can change the hoods around so you can customize it to your taste, which is a really nice little extra. And the wheels, as we said at the start, are plastic wheels, which are gonna mean that there's no maintenance. And you might notice they are quite small plastic wheels. So although you, you can get it over a few little minor bumps, it's not gonna be the best if you are living in a rural area, you know, if you're out and about, going in the forest, all those sorts of things, you probably don't want something with these sorts of wheels. But for a town, which, you know, I'm, I'm assuming they're kind of targeting here because of how slim it is, they'd be absolutely perfect. And of course, it comes with bumper bars, it comes with a rain cover, you've got everything you need to get started. There's no extras that you need to purchase, which is great. So that is the Huck Swift X Duo by Huck. Huck are a brilliant brand. They have great price points, really good quality, and this is a really nice one of theirs. This retails at just under £430 and you can use this from birth all the way up until your child reaches 
15k so that's somewhere around three years old you might get a little bit more use out of it if your child is on the smaller side so you might get somewhere towards four years old in order to use it from birth you do need to combine it with Hux carry cot or you can also use one of their car seats as well and it does come with adapters included so that you can put the car seat straight on there without having to purchase the adapters separately so today we're going to get this out of the box we're going to get it all together build the push chair and then we can have a look at all of the features that it has we're looking at this in the black color and it is a large double quite heavy just over 17k so inside the box we can see the push chair is packaged up here with some plastic it's a very very sturdy box and it would need to be with the weight of this push chair so what we're going to do is get this out and i'll lay everything out so you can see exactly what you get in here okay so here in front of me is all of the contents of the box so we can see here we've got the push chair itself we have got two individual hoods we have got the pins and the washers and we're going to need these to secure our rear wheels we've got some bumper bars here individual bumper bars with leverette detailing on them here are the adapters so that you can attach a car seat to the push chair so if you're wanting to use it from newborn you'll have to do that you'll have to put the adapters on to either attach a car seat or alternatively you can use one of huck's carry carts and this is the rain cover so one of the things i really like about huck is there's always a rain cover included which is so useful to not have to think about it so what you're going to have to do to build this push chair is get the wheels on and before we do that we're just taking a look at the wheels so this um, push chair is aimed towards all terrains so you can use it for off-road use and the wheels are rubber wheels and what that's going to mean is it will give you um, it will maneuver better over off-road um, any bumps, if you're in a forest, if you live in rural areas, anything like that, it will just manoeuvre much nicer for you. It will go over bumps a lot easier for you and make it a much smoother ride. And you can see here we've got really large rear tyres. And again, that's just going to help for off-road use and offer you um, really great maneuverability regardless of what terrain you're in so whether you want to use this for city use or you want to use it for more off-road use you're covered with these sorts of wheels so generally with off-road you always want to look for rubber foam or better still an air tire um, but one of the great things about having a rubber tire is there's no maintenance involved so you're going to put them on and you'll never have to think about them again there's going to be no having to pump them up there's going to be no punctures nothing like that so they're really great all-round wheels so to attach the rear wheels we can see that you have here the brake bar and on this brake bar is where we're going to attach the back wheels so to start with we're going to need to slot this onto the frame and what you'll need to do for that is slot it down you can see here you've got these silver pins so you're going to match up the silver pins to the hole on the brake bar and we are just going to slot it into place there we go so that will click into place and once you've done that you're ready to put these rear wheels on so as i said it comes with washers and pins and this is standard for huck push chairs this is how the rear wheels would attach on all of the huck push chairs you need to secure them in with this washer and pin so what you'll do is pop the wheel on facing this way so this is going to go onto the bar and then if i bring this round at the end of the bar are two little holes one there one there that's what the pin's going to go through and you're going to start off by popping the washer on and then you want to get the straight part of the straight part of this pin through the holes so let's do that 
And once you've got the pin in place, you're just going to put this cap over the top. That's going to keep the pin safe and just make your wheel look a bit prettier. So if we go and do the other side. Ooh. Exactly the same thing. You can see we've got this hole at the end of the bar. That's where we're going to slot our pin into. So let's push the wheel on. Okay, that's in place. Pop your washer in, get your pin, and then we can pop that through. There we go. Okay, that's the pin in place. And then you can again just cover this up with the cap. All right, so let's get the cap on. Okay, so you can see exactly how that pin is sitting. And I lucked out that time because I did it quite quickly, but sometimes it has taken me quite a few attempts to get that in. Get this cap in place. There we go. Okay, so those are the rear wheels on. And then we're going to pop on our front wheels. Let's take these off. And the front wheels are much easier because they are just going to click into place. So pop them in. Push them around till you get a click. So much easier than the rear wheels. There we go. All right, so we've got the wheels on. Let's lift this up. A little push okay so I think we're gonna need to unlock one of these front wheels because I think one of them is locked so let's take a look at that let's see how we unlock it that one's swiveling so that's looking fine and this one is not swiveling so I think we need to click it that's it okay so here if I can get it here is where you lock the wheels so you would need to push it up to lock it and then push it right down and that will release them for you and allow them to swivel next up we've got the hoods and so you can see they don't come attached which means we're going to have to pop them on and if you have a look here on the frame we've got these little bits here where you see we've got like this little insert part here where we're going to pop the hood on so line it up there's one line this one up Ooh. there we go okay so that's the first one on let's pop our second one on and they are really easy to do sometimes when you have to attach the hood yourself you have to kind of pop them onto the frame and it's quite difficult but this is nice that they just slide into place so there we go slide it in right and that is both hoods attached okay so if you want to you've also got these bumper bars and they feel lovely actually they are leverette on them and they feel really nice and they Looks like they're going to slot into place here. So let's have a go at that. There we go. Okay, so they would just clip into place and I can feel here you've got two little buttons and it should be that we push on both of those, yeah. And they would just release. Okay, that's really easy to use. I'll keep one of them on. I'll keep the other one off so that we can see it both ways. Along with everything else that you get included, you also get a little cup, cup holder that will pop onto the frame, so that's quite useful. Okay, so we'll start off by having a look at the seats. So, first of all, they're a really good size for a double push chair. Now, obviously, this double push chair is um, fairly wide. It's not aiming to be a slim fit push chair. It's aiming to be all terrain. Um, and so it is heavier than some other double push chairs. Um, but it does mean that you're going to get a lot more room in the seats, which is really nice. Because uh, some slim line ones, 
Um, it's great, the slimline, and you can get them through doors really easily, but it does mean that you lose a little bit of space on the seats. And you can clearly see here, it's not gonna be a problem with these. So first off, the material is really nice. Okay, it's not soft to touch, but it's very smooth, no roughness at all. It looks really, really cushioned, really padded, and very, very comfortable. Definitely no need for you to put liner in unless you would choose to. Um, perhaps if you've got a newborn, you might want to, um, but honestly, really padded, and it feels very cushioned. So you'd have no worries about comfort there. You can see here we've got two different height positions for the straps. So if you want to move them around, you would need to unthread this strap from the back of the seat and then re-thread it through. And what that just means is it's gonna grow with your child because obviously you can start off with it lower and move it up. So as I said, you can't use the seats from newborn. Um, Huck recommend that instead of using the seat for a newborn, you use one of their carry cots or their car seat. But when your baby is ready to go in the seat, because there actually isn't a lower age limit as such, it's just that Huck don't recommend it for a newborn. So once you are ready to put your child in the seat, and they're a bit too small still for these straps, you've got these little hooks here. And what you do with those is you're gonna thread the sh strap through, get that through. A little bit fiddly because they, it's quite tight. But here we go, there we go. Okay, and what that's gonna do is just position the strap lower for you if your child is still a bit too small to have them on the other settings. You've got really nice um, padded parts to cover the straps up and make it more comfortable for your child. It's a five point harness. Um, which is pretty standard and you just need to slot these together and then you can clasp your child in makes a nice snap so you're going to know they're nice and secure there we go okay so it's a really nice secure strap and obviously you can adjust it exactly how you need to have it to fit your child in there perfectly we also have this extra bit of padding which you can put the strap and the clasp through again just to make it a little bit more comfortable for your child. So the footrests here are adjustable. This is in the upright position and if you wanted to put it down as your child grows there's two little buttons underneath the fabric that you press in. You could just hear it click then and then you can push it down and obviously as your child gets bigger that means their legs are going to dangle over onto the foot bar here. So we're gonna have a look now at how we adjust these seats. So we can see here that we've got a strap that we're gonna to use to adjust the seat and recline it and push it back up. And because it's a strap, what that means is that you can have it in any position you want, which is really great. It's really easy to do with a strap as well. So here we are on upright position and all you would do to bring it down is press this little black button on here and then pull it down. And then as I said, you can have it in any position you want. So if we wanted to do it in midway, let's spin that round. There we go. That's midway position. And then we can get it all the way down. There we go. Spin it round and that is on the lie flat position so looking at the lie flat position it actually goes into a really nice position you've obviously got a slight tilt there still um, but it is as flat as you need it to be in order for your child to have a nice comfortable sleep and let's push it back up onto upright so again we're just going to use this little black button and we are gonna push this little mechanism up when we push the black button in, all the way up. That's as far as it can go. Spin this back round. And there we have our highest position 
for the chair, which looks really comfortable. Still on a slight recline, um, but that's the same with any push chair really that you buy. Most of them have still got a slight recline, even when you've got the seat as forward as possible. But this looks really, really comfortable. We've got this foot bar here at the front, which is just a plastic foot bar. It's gonna be really easy to keep that clean. Obviously it may scuff, I would expect it to scuff, especially if you're using it for off-road purposes. Um, but you can see there, you're just gonna be, be able to wipe off any mud from your children's shoes. Spinning it back round, let's have a look at the baskets. So you've actually got two separate baskets here, which is really quite unusual for a double push chair. And they are fairly shallow, both of them. Obviously they're exactly the same. And you could definitely fit a good sized nappy bag in there. You could probably put your coat on top, but they are quite shallow. So you can see on the sides here, there's not much really supporting anything that you put in there. So you would want to be careful about putting any of your valuables in directly to the basket. You're going to want to really have them in a bag and then pop them into the basket. But they're, they're a decent size. Um, as I said, I would just be a little bit concerned about anything falling out. Here is our brake bar. So to use that, you're just going to push that bar down. There we go, that's in locked position. And then when you're ready to, you just use your foot to push that back up. And there you are unlocked. That's quite easy to use. It's a little bit stiff when you push it back up, um, but it's really easy to pop it into the locked position. And you're just gonna need to use a little bit more force to get it unlocked. The handlebar has got some, a really nice soft leverette wrapped around it. So that's gonna be really comfortable to push. In terms of height, um, I am only five foot, so I'm quite small and it is quite comfortable. It's a little bit too high for me, um, but obviously most people are taller than me, so I'm sure for you it's gonna be absolutely fine. Something to bear in mind, um, slightly more expensive push chair, but it doesn't have uh, adjustable an adjustable handle on it, so this is the one and only height that you're gonna have. A lot of people always like to know whether the handlebars are adjustable. This one isn't, but as I said, it's quite a tall handlebar, so I can't imagine that you're going to have any problems with it. Spin it round. Let's have a look at those hoods. Now, you can see straight away that the hoods are a nice, thick material. And if we pull them down, you can see that they're a decent coverage, actually. You do get quite a lot of coverage on there. And I'm just having a look. Oh, even better. Look what I found. So these actually extend. So we've got a zip here. And then you can pull them even further down. So here we have the one where the zip hasn't been undone yet. And here is the one with the zip. And I love a full coverage hood because they are not only going to add extra protection from all kinds of weather but they're also great for when your child's napping so if we pull this one down where we've got the seat on full recline and bring this down you can see how much privacy that's going to give your napping child which is really nice the hoods are like a linen effect material they feel really nice and really, really sturdy. And as well as the fact that they're extendable, they also have this peekaboo peek mesh bit here. Spin this round. So you can see your child when they're napping. It means you can keep an eye on them without having to go all the way around the push chair and disturbing them. And also this is ventilation. So that's really nice on a hot day just to give some extra ventilation through the push chair for, for them. Now this weighs just over 17k, so it is quite a heavy push chair, and you can feel that when you move it. Although it's really easy to push, it manoeuvres lovely for a really large push chair. It does have some weight to it, so that's just something to bear in mind when you're picking which push chair you would like. This is a very sturdy double push chair. Let's take a look at how to fold this now. So. This is quite similar to some other double pushchair brands. 
the fold you actually do from the seats so you can see here quite obvious it says pull and fold and what you're going to do is you're going to pull up on both of these and you're kind of hear a little click to say to show you that the mechanisms work to fold it into place so we're going to put them up and then it just folds down so here you have it in its collapsed position and you can see it is a large fold and for sure you're going to have to think about whether this is actually going to fit into your boot it does look to me like it would fit into most boots um, but you may not be able to fit much else in once you've got this in place and obviously if you're storing it at home you would need to have a little think about how much room you've got to store it so you can if i turn this around so we get a side on view you can see here it's quite wide when it's um, folded so yeah it's just something to think about really how much room you've got and whether you're going to be able to get this into your car easily or not um, but I'm assuming if you've got two small children you've probably got a decent size car and therefore you've probably got enough space to put this in your boot can see on the frame here that it's got this little part which clicks um, into place once you've folded it down and it keeps the frame together and for, to get this back up what you need to do is unhook that and then if we grab it by the handlebar unhook it there we go it goes back into place now it is heavy when you do that um, and you're going to need a little bit of strength to get that back up into place. It does go up very easily in terms of you don't need to wriggle it around or anything to get it clicked back up into position. But it is quite heavy. So as I said, a 17k, it really is just something you need to, to think about whether this weight is going to be okay for you or not. But the actual fold mechanism itself, as you can see, if we do it again is so simple and really, really quick. You can't do it one-handed, you're gonna need two hands for it, but all you're doing is pulling it up, and there you go. It just folds straight down, so that's really simple to do. So, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Huck themselves, I uh, don't recommend that you use the seats from newborn. Um, they recommend that you use one of their soft carry cots or one of their car seats. And there, as I said as well, there isn't actually a lower age limit on the seats. It's just what they recommend. So that's a bit of an odd one, really. I, I guess you're going to have to kind of use your judgment on that as to when you start using the seats. Um, because to me, they look perfectly comfortable for a small child. And uh, um, as we looked at earlier, you can pull these straps down so that it will make it more comfortable for your child as well. But going by what Huck say, you may want to obviously use the car seat or the carry cot first. And included with this push chair are adapters so that you can attach the um, car seat to it. So you can use one of Huck's car seats one of, um, or one of Huck's carry cots to put on there. And um, perhaps you've got an older child in the seat and you've got your younger child in the car seat. So it's a comfort fix from their range of car seats that they recommend that you can use on this. At just over £430, which this retails at, it is a slightly higher price point for Huck, but you can see why it's a higher price point. It is really nice quality. The seats are lovely, very, very roomy, really padded. Um, the tyres are nice, um, as we were saying, to use on all terrain, which is really useful. It's a really smart look. You have these lovely extendable hoods that have a really nice feel and look to them. And it def definitely looks a lot more luxurious than some of the lower price points uh, of push chairs that you can get from Huck. It just looks like it's going to be incredibly comfortable. Just a, a couple of little notes that you'll want to really think about um, if you're looking to purchase this is, as we've mentioned already, the weight of it at over 17k. Um, that needs to be something that you're comfortable with pushing around. 
And the other thing that you need to think about is if you are using this with a newborn, purchasing the car seat or the carry cart to um, pop on there when they're first born. And then obviously it's up to you when you're ready to put them in the seat. Um, but the great thing is you won't need to purchase any adapters because they do come with. It's really easy to fold. Um, another point that you'll need to think about is the size of the fold once you've got it down. Have you got enough room to store it? Have you got enough room to get it in your car? Um, but in terms of actually folding it, it's really easy, really easy to get it to get it back up, although a little heavy. Um, so they're just little pointers that you need to think about if you're wanting to purchase this. Uh, but overall, it is a really, really nice push chair. You can just see it looks really nice quality. I found it really easy to push and the um, size of the seats means that you're not going to have any trouble there fitting your slightly larger child in there and they're still going to have lots of room and be incredibly comfortable. You need to remember that the weight limit for both seats is 15k so that is around three years old. Um, it, you may get more use of it out of it if your child's a little bit smaller and you also need to take into account that the baskets can only have 3k in that's through both of them so 3, 3k in total for the basket and you do need to bear that in mind that you mustn't overload it because then you're actually overloading the whole push chair that is the Huck Uptown Duo this retails at just under £430 and in my opinion this is a really nice choice it's about midway price point from in comparison to other doubles and you definitely get some really nice perks on this really comfortable seats nice non-maintenance tires and lovely uh, lovely hoods on them as well they're extendable so i've got in front of me these two huck doubles so we've got the swift x duo on this side and we've got the uptown double on this side now retail prices this one here retails at 430 pounds this one here retails at 230 pounds there is a big weight difference in both so the uptown weighs just over 17k and the swift weighs just over 12k although they're both the same brand and they're both doubles they're very very different in terms of what you would use them for and in terms of size and weight so if we start off with the differences between the two the swift here is actually designed for um for town use so it would be really great if you live in a town if you're having to get um, off and on tra public transport, if you are in and out of the shops, this would be great for you. It's a really narrow double, as you can see in comparison. And because of that, the seats are quite slim, which does mean that there might be limited use to how much you're going to, yeah, how much use you're going to get out of this. Um, but it is designed for using in a town, for being able to push through shops, to get through any doorway. And you can see from the size of it that you will be able to do that easily. Now, in comparison with the uptown, this is actually designed for all-terrain use and the seats are much larger and less squashed together as well. So you've got longer seats and wider seats, which then may make it more difficult for you, you, for you if you're using it in a town. If you want it for when you're out and about shopping, you can see that it will be wider for you going through doorways, going through aisles. So that is one of the big differences between these two doubles. Another difference between the two are the wheels. So with this one here, with the Swift, we have got very small plastic wheels which are not designed for off-road use. These are designed for smooth pavements and town use. They'll be fine going over small bumps in pavements, but other than that, it really is just for if you're in an area where it's very smooth, you've not got too many bumps to navigate. Um, but with a plastic wheel, they're very hard wearing and there's no maintenance required at all. In comparison, as this is an all-terrain double push chair, we've got really nice rubber tyres here. So we've got quite nice large ones at the back and then we've got these slightly smaller ones at the front. And with a rubber tyre, you're going to be able to use them on any terrain. 
So they're going to be fine for using in a town, for using in more rural areas, if you're using it in the park, if you're off for walks in the forest, you're going to be, be able to do all of that with these tyres. Um, they are not the ultimate for off-road use, really the ultimate is an air tyre, but the advantage of having these rubber tyres is there are n there's no maintenance involved for them, so you're not going to get punctures or anything like that, which does make it a little bit easier than if you have an airfield tyre. You can see just by looking at both of these side by side, there is a difference in terms of quality of the materials used. So we've got slightly cheaper material on this Swift here, which is obviously a cheaper pushchair. And we have a much cheaper looking and thinner hoods. So in comparison with the Uptown, this is a really nice linen effect material, really padded, really comfortable definitely going to be nice and snug for your child and we have these lovely linen effect um, hoods which are also extendable they are much much thicker than the swift and we can see here you know they're they're so much bigger as well than the swift ones so it's they're really nicely designed you can pull them out extend them even when they're not on um when you haven't extended them they're still a really good size both of the push chairs you can use up until your child reaches 15k, so you've got 15k in each seat. You can use them from birth, although with the Uptown, they do, Huck do recommend that you use one of their car seats or their carry carts when your child's first born and then when you're ready you can put them into the seat. Um, they don't say that with the Swift, you can use it straight from newborn. Um, although there is no lower age limit on the Uptown, so if you, you know, it's really your choice as to when you're going to put your child in there from newborn. It's just that Huck recommend that you use one of the car seats or their carry cart. And with this one, you do get adapters included as well. Although they both, both of these um, push chairs, you can use up until your child reaches 15K, you can clearly see the size difference in the seats and the fact that this is going to accommodate your child right up until they reach 15K without any problems. And this one here, as it is so slim, it's something to bear in mind that um, if your child is already reaching that age limit, you're probably not going to get much use out of this. And they might be quite squashed in the seat. So I would say this is more ideal for a smaller child um, when your child's first born, probably up until around two, two and a half. Whereas with this one, you're going to get full use up until your child reaches 15K. Um, and there's going to be no squeezing them into the seats. So I'm going to show you the folds on both of these now because they're very different. So if we start off here with our nice slim line one, the fold is on the handle and while we're at it, both of these handles are not adjustable. So this is the, the height that you've got. You're not going to be able to adjust this height. And if I bring this one round, you can see here that the height of the uptown, it is higher than the Swift. You can also see before we fold them down, we've got this, them this way round, that the covering on the handlebar of the Uptown is a really nice leverette um, covering. It looks really comfortable. And here you have got a cheaper looking foam cover on the handle. Um, obviously they're very different price points, so that's reflected in the materials that's used. Right, so if we have a look at the Swift, so you're using the handlebar mechanism to fold this down and we are going to use push this little button to the side and if you see here, we've got a button underneath and what we need to do is do move this forward, push in the button and then it's going to collapse down for us. So I'll show you that. There we go easy to do it's quite a slow fold but really easy to do and this one folds completely differently so to fold this down you're going to use these little handles on the seats where it says pull and fold and all you're going to do is pull pull these up and it collapses down okay so very different folds and also very different sizes once folded down which we can see so if you put these next to each other 
you can clearly see that this Swift is a much smaller fold and therefore is going to be much easier to get into any car boot. And if you are using it on public transport, you can and, and it is recommended that you always take your pushchair down before you get onto a um, train or onto a bus. You can see how small that's going to fold for you, and that will be easy to get on and off of public transport. This one, not so much so, because you can see it's a really large fold. So you'll what you'd have to do is make sure you've got enough room in your boot to store this down but it certainly isn't going to be anywhere near as easy to get up and down if you were going to use this on public transport so just show you like on the sides here how different these folds are and that there is a really big size difference once they're folded down Okay, let's bring them back up. So both of them have a little lock in place that keeps the frame together. So you wanna unlock that before you pull the push chair up. This one needs a bit of a wiggle to get it in place. But as it's quite light, that's not a problem. And then this one here, if we unlock this, You don't need to wiggle it in place, but it is very heavy when you bring it back up. The other differences we've got here is the brake bars are slightly different. Here you've got the brake in the middle that you push down and then you pop it back up. And this one here, you can see we haven't got a little foot plate to do it. We just use the bar push it down and then you put your foot underneath that bar and bring it up. It's a bit stiffer than the brake on this side. The other differences are the baskets. So on this uptown, you've actually got two individual baskets. You've got one basket on the Swift. Both of them are quite shallow baskets. Um, they're you're gonna get the same amount in them, I think. I don't think it's much difference really at all. The only thing with the uptown, which I wasn't so keen on, is that it's they're very shallow, the baskets. You can see you've not got anything kind of protecting your stuff once it's in there. And on the Swift, although it's really shallow at the back, you've got these side nets here, which is going to protect anything that you put in there. But in terms of what you're going to get in, it definitely looks like it's going to be about the same to me. OK, similar things between the two, and there aren't many, is the mechanism of how you recline the seats. Both of these push chairs, you recline using a strap. And what that means is that you can have the um, seats in any position you want, which is really great to have. So they both work slightly differently, but in the same way, if you see what I mean, because they're straps. This one here, you pull down on this little mechanism here and then you push it in and pull it up really simple to use and this has got a little button on it so it's just slightly different and you would push the button in pull it all the way up push the button in let it all the way down okay other similar things on both of these is they both come with a detachable bumper bar so you get a bumper bar for each seat and they're really easy to remove both of them again the difference that you have here is the materials used so you've got a cheaper looking material on the swift and then you've got this lovely leverette which is the same as the handlebar on the uptown Another similar thing is how the straps work. So you have these two levels on both of these push chairs, and what you would need to do on both of them is unthread the strap from the back of the seat and then move it down onto the next level. And they both have these little extra bits here, which you can actually thread your strap through to make it um, a a better size for a smaller child so for a newborn the clasps we can see here they are the same clasp um, the only difference here are the straps this one says huck this one doesn't and then again you've got slightly better materials on the padding around the straps but they're both five point harnesses so there's not really going to be any difference other than the look in them both push chairs have adjustable legs, so you can put them up on both. 
Um, the only difference is the little mechanism underneath, how it works, but they do exactly the same thing. So you can see there that you do have a lot more room on the uptown. You can see the seat is not as shallow as the Swift, and that is clearly because the Swift is just a smaller double, so you do get less room.